All right, good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Hurley Investments Market View Commentary for Monday, the 30th and last day of the month for September. As I go through my market recap, the stock market went straight down last week with the Dow Jones losing 0.43. The S&P lost a whopping 1.01. The NASDAQ was down 2.19. Uh, only three of the sectors, utilities, consumer staples, and real estate managed to add value on the week. Healthcare sank. Uh, in all honesty, technology sank, as you can tell by the NASDAQ. Internationally, developed markets sold off 0.9%. Emerging markets, 1.29%. Small caps started with the Russell 2000 going down 2.42%. So I want to talk about our markets right now. Today... On CNBC, I heard how small caps and mid caps were the safe haven for the month of September. Yet, both were down for the month. I don't get it. Because in all honesty, when I go and I take a look at a chart, if I was going to bring up the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which I believed, for all intents and purposes, was saved by Apple and probably Nike, right? With all due respect, I'm taking a look and I'm saying, hey, Dow Jones for the month was up. A third of a percent. Not a bad position to be in. If I went ahead and I did the SPX, I take a look at it and say, eh, not a bad position, was up maybe even a couple percent. And I don't like it this way. Let me move this off to the side. Thank you, people. I'm going to do this one more time. Just so I can get the picture the way that I like it. Uh, maybe I might get it. Maybe I won't. What a bugger. All right. And then obviously, if you pull on the NASDAQ, I choose to look at the NASDAQ composite. If I take a quick peek and look at the NASDAQ composite, eh, up a smidget. Not bad, but up a smidget. So I sat there, and I'll be 100% honest with you, I was confused. I was 100% confused. So I looked at the averages and was confused. Then, uh, what's the other one? Not CNN, then Fox News. Talked about safe havens. Where do you think their safe haven was? Where do you think their safe haven was? You got it. Consumer discretionary. 
Maybe they meant consumer staples, but consumer discretionary because of Nike and Apple. Well, consumer discretionary was down and was down pretty good. So out of curiosity, I'm wondering what's going on. And where is the September drop? Will it come in October? Pre-Christmas rally. What are your thoughts? Someone explain it to me because I don't. I don't know if you're going to like what I'm going to tell you, but someone explain it to me. What's happening? Rotation. Mod, that's a good good possibility. <laughs> they're all dumb and don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> Thank you, Lance. I would agree. Um, I could almost agree with rotation, but let me go ahead and let me pull in the S&P really quickly. If you look at the S&P, typically when you're going to go through rotation, you're going to see some type of uh, exaggerated volume, right? More volume, bigger volume, and I personally didn't see that. So if I didn't see that, um, I'm not sure that I'm seeing the volume except for the big down day that would justify rotation. That doesn't mean that it didn't happen, but I didn't see the volume that would say, hey, it's a rotation-based month. I just, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. I don't have the, the volume to justify it. I didn't see it. May I suggest something else? Or is anyone else would like to suggest something? And this is going to be more along conspiracy theory, even though it's, I would never recommend you, you trade or suggest you trade on conspiracy theory. But could I just make the comment Could it be the media trying to make it sound like it has been in the past? Last year, we really didn't get a September crush either. Came more October, November. Could it be that we're doing better than expected? The fact we got through this quarter flat, um, I'm all for it. I like hearing that. In fact, right now I am planning for the end of the year run. What does that mean? Apple for iPhone sales, Boeing for a possible 737 approval, China deal, which for me will help out Baidu, Disney Plus bundle. 
Um, I really like this one. Visa, end of the year. Um, Christmas shopping. I could even say you could run into something like Target for retail sales. There's a lot that you could be preparing for that makes you wonder. What if you don't get what you want like last year, big sell off in December? You know, then I'm going to be in, uh, in a little bit of trouble for the end of the year. But we made a fabulous run up through January of this year. Really not a bad run up through uh, February either. So, interesting. Um, I know when you say repo, are you talking about repositioning? Where you shift through, is that what you're talking about? That's usually when I hear repo uh, on TV, the big words, talking about repositioning, repositioning, moving from one sector to another. For example, you'll see a repositioning out of um, energy gas stocks more into energy, natural gas, or electricity for heating this part of the year. You'll usually see a run into um, retail stocks now for their Christmas numbers, and they'll sell off, and then they'll reposition again to get back into uh, retail before summer for the summer sales. The good news is, though, we are going to protect through earnings. The bad news is it feels like I'm learning the uh, I'm learning the Trump sales cycle all over again. It seems like it really is a a bit disturbing. It could be interesting. Good comment. We do have Christmas rally, China deal or small deal, and maybe slash most likely one more rate cut in December. I don't know if it's going to come in the November one, but that would make sense. I could give it, uh, let's go ahead, let's put November in there. I'd probably expect to be the November 17th one. So, it'll be interesting to see. It'll be interesting to see um, another unique year for, for the stock market. Next year, looking at next year, anyone know already? What is the expectation next year? Anyone know? <laughs> always bullish because it is an election year. But when does the bullishness come? When does the bullishness come? <laughs> Interesting. So, Lance, you just said when your candidate's winning, and that's an interesting thought process, but it's not necessarily when your candidate's winning, but the candidate that is best for the stock market, which this year I would assume would be Trump, 
made it uh, tax friendly, made it easier for for businesses to make money. I would not say it's going to be Warren. She uh, wants to increase taxes and make it more difficult. So I would not give it to Warren. Um, if it looks like if it looks like Trump is going to win, then you'll probably see a a run up in the market pre-election. You know, maybe in September, October, you could see the market really run up before that. If it looks close, you won't see your run up till after the election. And when Trump was elected, boy, it looked like he was going to be elected. We, you know, we had like a thousand point to the downside and the market swung back up higher. So it really is all over the board. It is 100% all over the board. But always bullish. It's an election year, even when we're going to come off of most likely some pretty flat, if not possible, negative year-over-year S&P 500 earnings. So it's going to be interesting to watch. Who just uh, typed that in? Google says the Fed's $400 billion plan to bail at the repo market, fortune.com. Um, Possibly. I haven't gone through that, Ida. And I don't know if the I don't know if the Fed would bail out a repo market, but I will look through it and I will um I will give you an answer on that when it comes to it next week. You're talking about repossession of cars or buildings or so forth, I'd assuming. Properties, items. Um, I will look into that one. So out of curiosity, where do you think our markets are going to go up? This week, it's kind of easy. I'm going to say up. Because new money will go to work after the sell-off last week at the end of a quarter. It's scary looking at our market. It really is pretty darn flat. Still technically bullish, but it's flat. S&P mirrors it. Well, Kevin, you've got a crossover. On your MACD, we're pretty close to a crossover on the 5 and the 20, but we do not have a crossover on our RSI. So we look like we're going to be okay. Obviously, the NASDAQ is technically bearish. Confirmed that last week. Yet I've never really worried about electronics going into Christmas. If you were to ask me where the S&P end October, I'm going to say up 1.25%, even though we're usually down like 25 or 2.3%. All I'm doing is going to be following along with the current trend that our market seems to be in. Earnings, uh, Cal is on today. Who, excuse me, uh, McCormick and, oh, that's Fix. What is that? The, uh, uh, I'll remember in a second. Lennar and Bed Bath & Beyond, Pepsi and Costco on Thursday. We had our Chicago PMI today. Ice and manufacturing, really nothing is important this week. Um, you might see ice and manufacturing be important only because we went uh, negative last month, but China supposedly had a positive month. 
Really, I think our average work week will be the most important one through this week. Tuesday, China National Day starts and they go through the rest of the week. We do have a PAL speech on Friday. So not much is really happening. Looking for trades, Alcoa reports on the 16th. I'm starting to keep track of when my companies are reporting. We don't have too many, a lot of estimated out there. There are some before the market opens, there are some after the market closes. But you should see a lot more of these estimates come up and be ready to go uh, next week. Trump says the U.S. reaches a deal with Japan. No vote needed. Pretty interesting because this is a pretty big agreement with Japan. I think it rivals our agreement with Mexico. Do pay attention. Read a little bit about it. Um, I... I really should just take this off. I've already gone through it a couple different times. I'm just kind of shocked at how that looks. Um, hello, article about the River Park Large Growth Fund and the Walt Disney Company, how Walt Disney is going to participate and the growth that Disney has with their Disney Plus. In all honesty, I think Disney will do good. I think Apple will do good. I think it's going to pull from the the dominant player right now, which will be Netflix. All right, what else do we have? Uh, White House deliveries to block tallest investments to China. Very interesting to see that come across as fake news today. In all honesty, uh, it wouldn't surprise me if the White House was just testing the waters. Stick something out there. Stick something out there and see uh, where it goes. See what people think. Uh, I found it interesting to, to see that they backtracked from it. In which case, um, trying to get into some leaps last week made sense, right? What else do we have? Apple buybacks are not ending. Very interesting look into Apple and where they're going to increase their their earnings per share. If you ever want to understand buy buybacks, how that moves in per earnings per share, great article to pay attention to. And then I found just this interesting that there are four main paths to becoming a millionaire, and this is the easiest one. I just something for you guys to look at and to read. All I was trying to point out today is that our markets are looking different and there's a lot of pent up profit or pent up upside looking at the market in the next one to three months before Christmas. It will be interesting to see where we go from here. Comments, what comments or questions do you guys have? that I can answer for you today. What well, comments or questions do you have that I can answer for you today? So Kevin, would you buy Baidu here? I'm assuming you're saying at this price. And the short answer is yes. In fact, we did a little dollar cost averaging on Baidu last week. Yes, it is the 50-day that's holding Baidu down. Um, they had great earnings. They could not hold their earnings. But I would expect to see Baidu in any kind of news get up to their 200-day at 140. They had great earnings. There's no reason why they shouldn't have gone at least to the 123. But they hit that pivot point at 114 and came back down. <clears throat> So, do I think China is a good buy at 102.76? Most definitely. You've got a 101 support level. We had great earnings. We have a China deal coming sometime down the road. So, yes, I would expect we do. Um, Target. Target. 
And are we protected on Baidu? We are. We are protected at Baidu up at at uh, 107 right now. Target. I still think Target is an excellent opportunity to get in. I was looking for more at 105. And I like what we saw today, basically a doji. I think Target's going to come on down to that 105, 104. 105 is my target. <laughs> target to add some more shares. Kevin, why haven't you done it before? Timing sucks. But 105 is where I'm looking to add shares to Target. It came down and touched it and it would bought back up. Uh, I like the little bit of a doji we see today. I do think it'll come back down. I'm trying to add shares to Target at 105, get it a little cheaper before their earnings. And I do not have Target on my list. So I will work on getting Target in our, our estimates as well. Uh, what about Apple? Um, Apple, I would expect to come back down a little bit. With that said, it could run into earnings. I do expect Apple to go higher in the long run. But right now, my expectation is Apple is just going to get up to that 125 again, and we might see it bounce back down. Do not have our crossover yet on our MACD. We're awfully close to over um, bought on the Williams percent R. I just, we got a nice little bounce today. 125, 126, and watch it come back down. But will Apple do better towards the end of the year? Most definitely it should. They got me on their iPhone 11. Can't wait till it comes. Good questions. What about FCX? So FCX is a materials play. Freeport McMoran. Uh, I, I haven't seen the big pop in materials, oil. We have $10 puts in place right now. It is just about oversold, but it can't see oversold for a while. I think what will move Freeport McMoran on their earnings would be the price in gold. Price in gold back up to that 1500 range, although it's probably a little bit below that. If you give me a second, I'll tell you where gold is going to be. Um, but my expectation with the run up on gold should help Freeport McMoran on on uh on their earnings and it sits at 1480 right now so freeport mcmoran uh, i would probably expect to see it go back down to nine dollars before their earnings ten dollar puts i'd roll down to nine dollars i'd take a profit and i would expect to see a bounce higher after their earnings and uh you know hopefully off they go they did overpay for some oil and gas fields but we've had a short-term bounce and a nice bounce on, on, on both. So I think we'd be okay there. Are there any other questions? Why are you invested in Boeing? Uh, I'm invested for Boeing because they've got a huge runway of planes down the road, being the Dreamliner. Um, once they figure out how much they're going to have to pay the airlines for this screw up, uh, we'll probably see some 737 orders come back in and, um, and they just, they've got so many contracts out there for profitability that, um, they're a bounce back right up to the 440-ish, 448 level that they were at before. That's still $60, $68 from the, the 380s they're at right now. And, uh, you know, I, I guess I don't give Airbus enough credit 
to be a competitor. Uh, we have Jeff Schaffner, who's a, a pilot or was a pilot here with us that may disagree or may shed some light on it. But uh, the Dreamliner seems to be eight, 10 years out, back ordered, and a big cash cow for them. So with them not making the 737s, not ditching all their their uh, their workforce, I would assume they transfer some of that over for the Dreamliners, and maybe that'll pop up a little bit higher. But I'm in Boeing because they're not poorly run. They've had a mistake with a plane, and they still have such a profit runway out in front of them that for forever that I think that's an opportunity. I see no reason why they couldn't get to 440. Uh, for those who follow the safe options, uh, the safe option strategies, um, SOS there, um, I would not be capping Boeing with a short call. I would definitely have that off before their next earnings or before their next news cycle in November that um, could, could, well, the stock can move significantly higher. Are there any other questions? If there are not, we are adding some smaller videos to uh, help people out. We have one on is, is stock investing gambling. We'll have two or three more coming out here on shorting stocks. We're going to try to give some more information out to individuals on, on just some, some smaller term videos to try to help people out when it comes to their investing in the stock market. It'll be pretty interesting to, uh, to see how that works out for us, but that's the hope and that's our expectation. Since there are no more questions, guys, appreciate you being here. Have an excellent evening. Tomorrow, um, for those of you that are the trade findings and adjustments, most likely we're going to have to reschedule or we will send out a trade findings and adjustments early at the close of the market. Please check your email for that coming across to you and we'll go from there. No more questions, guys. Have a wonderful evening. I look forward to seeing you uh, Thursday morning or next week. Bye-bye.